computer art tutorial what we're going to get into today is creating sort of this like a trading card like a promotional advertisement kind of effect uh, to any kind of uh, it could be a sports figure it could be a musician it could even be an item like a thing like a product um, this could be a sort of like a you know, an image for promoting uh, something. So this could be a shoe here instead of uh, the basketball player. It could be um, the new iPhone or something like that. So, um, you know, any subject could go in its place with the shadow and the name and all that. And, um, you know, and you could be creative with this approach. But um, I'll walk you through creating kind of this uh, similar type image um, using Pixlr. So uh, going to go ahead and go to my home and start with the creating new uh new project here. I'm going to choose this size that right here, uh, Instagram size, um, just because it has the 1080 width, which we want, but we're going to change the height actually to be 1350. So 1350. So 1350 for the height. Uh, so it's a little higher than higher than it is wide. And then we'll click create to uh, get started. So first thing we're going to want to do is take our paint bucket tool and we're going to fill this with a white so I'm going to click up in this corner to get white and click to fill. Next thing we're going to want to do is we'll add a shape to kind of break up this space. So we'll have a color down here. Um, that color you'll want to probably relate to your product or image or whatever you're representing um, with your piece. So I chose a purple color because uh, Kobe Bryant played for the uh, Los Angeles Lakers and that was the color, one of their team colors. So uh, your second color here should be black, so make sure that you choose black um, for the second color. I suppose you could have a different outline color or stroke color as well, but um, black is what I'm going with. Shape will be a rectangle. Uh, we'll go with the stroke. We're going to turn that up to 25. Um, stroke is the term for the outline. So that's the size of the outline we're changing there. And then just click and drag to make this box. Now you'll see um, I had my colors flipped by accident. Um, so uh, your outline color is going to be this first one and your fill color is the second one, I suppose. So I'm going to hit Command Z, do a little toggle to switch this. And then as I draw it again, and I'm going to go all the way outside I don't know if I can see the bottom edge here. So I'm going to go all the way outside the bottom edge. I'm going to undo one more time. I don't really want this to be right smack middle in the halfway point. Kind of think of it like almost like thirds. So like two thirds of the space and this is like one third of the space sort of. Just a good rule to uh, think about dividing space into thirds when it comes to design. Um, so now that I've got this, uh, I need to bring in a texture, so a stone texture to work with. So I've already done a little searching, uh, Google image search for stone texture or any other texture you can think of. It could be a rust texture, it could be um, wood grain texture, I guess, technically. Uh, it could really be any kind of texture. Um, so copying this image of texture to overlap my background, I'm going to hit Command V to paste it. Uh, go to my moving or arranging tool and just going to rotate this sideways so that it goes with the image here and then expand it so that it goes all the way outside the edges. Okay, and then what I want to do with this um, texture is I want to um, change its layer style, right? So we click on these three dots here. I'll go to layer style here and we want to choose multiply. And that just blends it in with the other things in the background. We'll also turn down the opacity um, to 40. So I'll just enter in 40 here. Um, if you want to use a different level of your texture, you can choose to have a little uh, higher transparency if you want. But I just want this to be a soft texture that's kind of in the background. So now what we need to do is put in our whatever we're advertising for, whatever we're promoting. So whether it's a product or item or object or um, in my case, it's an athlete. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I already have my picture here that I called up through a search. I'm going to copy that image. I can close these extra tabs for now and then hit Command V to paste it in. I'm going to uh, click and drag on the corners to expand him. And then I'm going to go into using um, some of our uh, masking or trimming tools. I might start with my lasso tool to kind of like get a very basic outline away from this. So I'm going to kind of like select 
sort of generally around him. And then I'm going to go to select inverse, invert selection, and then just hit delete to clear out majority of that. Um, and then hit command D to deselect. And then what I'm gonna use is actually this, uh, the trim um, cutout mask tool. And I'm gonna to go to the option that is the draw cutout option. I want to be on removing from cutout, so I'm removing from this image. And then for the brush size here, I wanna make sure that my brush is kind of a medium softness. And let's turn up the size so I can see a little bigger. Yeah, I wanna say, um, yeah, that's a pretty decent brush size, 97. I wanna say that I was using more like 80 for a brush size. Um, and then the softness somewhere around there, yeah, 30% is pretty good. So um, that's gonna make it a little more forgiving when we go around this and try and get rid of the background. Um, using this tool will make things, um, it'll appear much uh, more forgiving when you're going around the edges. Plus you can add it back really easily with the add to cutout button. So since I went and switched to tool and did a zoom in, uh, I gotta go back to draw cutout. So make sure you're on draw cutout, uh, remove from cutout is the option. And when you click and drag here, you're gonna see kind of like this red um, brush mark almost come out. And that's what that's doing is just hiding this part of the image. So all these parts where I'm covering right now are just hidden. I can bring them back, but um, I don't want to. But if I go accidentally, um, which may very well happen, whoa, um, if I scroll on my mouse, it zooms. I probably need to go ahead and disable that feature because it has not helped me out too much. Um, so, um, yeah, going in here, I'm gonna keep going around my subject. You can navigate through in this little window too that can be helpful. Um, I'm gonna go as close to the edge as I can. You know, I don't really want any of this background image showing. Um, so try and get as close to the edge of your subject as you can. Um, going around the legs, I may end up not doing this uh, as much detail as I might like just to save some video time here. But um, I will probably go ahead and make a mistake at some point just so I can review showing you how to add things back if you happen to go too far. All right, so um, let's say for instance, um, I'm trying to get rid of some more of this black around the edge of the ball. Um, let's say, for instance, there. I kind of trimmed off too much of his elbow, right? I can go back to Add to Cut Out, and I can click to just add that area back. So nice and easy um, ability to kind of undo, if you will, kind of like a, a mistake if, you're, if you make any mistakes doing this. So, um, like I said, you're gonna, uh, you know, maybe not go to the length of detail that I would want you to go to and that I did in my other example, just to save a little bit of time. But this looks pretty good. I really would want to spend more time uh, trying to go around the legs. I'll just do that, try and do that quickly. And then we'll move on to the next steps. So, this is looking pretty decent. Might just go ahead here, make my brush smaller. You know, you will have to kind of, you know, adjust your brush size and things as you go to get into uh, some of the smaller areas. Oops, I think I clicked on a square brush, which I did not really want. Um, okay, so just taking out some more of this area here. Yeah, I definitely changed the type of brush by accident, but that's okay. Just trying to get rid of some of this, cool. Okay, um, so gonna zoom back out. Oh yeah, one last spot that I really wanna get rid of. I don't want this uh, space in the middle here. So I had been playing around with my magic wand tool before, its tolerance is not on what it should default be set at at 32. So just gonna put that back there. Oop, uh, don't wanna bookmark. Um, so Command D, I was trying to hit, but it's bringing up my bookmark bar. <laughs> Weird. Okay, so I was trying to hit Command D to deselect there because, oh, okay. So 
Um, again, deselect one of those days here where I'm going to go through all the steps. So I made the tolerance a little lower because it was selecting some part of his neck that I did not want to delete. Um, so just going to hit delete at, there after using my magic wand tool uh, and getting rid of all that in there. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Again, like I said, you know, take, take your time with this part and make sure that you... Um, you know, trim out whatever your your product or your person is, um, you know, as, as good as you can, uh, getting just the subject to be the focus. Um, okay, so enlarging just a little bit, and now we're ready for the next steps. So what we need to do next is, um, is add the text. So text is going to go in the background here. We'll add a text layer. So clicking on the type tool, clicking out here, it'll ask us if we want to add text layer. I am going to type in the last name here, so B-R-Y-A-N-T. Again, if this is some product or item, you can have the name of that here, or you can have um, the name of the person, the first name, last name, whatever you feel like doing. So um, I'm going to go back with my type tool here. Let's change our font first. Um, find something probably pretty bold. I mean, you can do really whatever font you would like to do. Um, and so I was kind of using this one before. I kind of like this one, but I think I like mostly ones that are um, all caps for something like this. So I think it just kind of emphasizes the point a little bit more. I'm going to stretch my text box so that it goes all the way across um, my page here. The color should be black. That would be the best uh, way to go here. And then the other thing that we can look at is settings for letter spacing. So if your word or font doesn't fit all the way across, you can change or play with the letter spacing, make the letters um, a little more spaced out or less spaced out if you want them closer together. Um, so that looks like that is a-okay. I'm going to um, take this, actually I don't like how the T, I want to see more of that letter T at the end. Okay, that seems pretty good. Um, now I'm going to take this and make it uh, actually go behind this image. I want it to be in the background, and now I'm going to just do its transparency. So I'm going to turn its transparency down to 25% is what I think I had on it. 25, 35, somewhere in there is probably a good level. Um, the other things that I added to this was a, uh, a shadow behind the subject of the subject. So all we need to do there is take this layer, we're going to duplicate it. So we click on the three dots, we go to duplicate layer. Um, the top one we can leave alone. The bottom one here, we want to go to uh, adjustment and we'll go to hue saturation and just turn that saturation down and the lightness down. If I move this out of the way, you'll see. Um, oh, can't see it because I didn't move it, but I'm just going to hit apply. Um, and now if I take this um, layer, I'm just going to hit my arrow keys. So just hitting to the right. So I make sure that I'm taking this, um, the one that's in the back here. Yeah, so you can see how I, I turn the saturation and darkness uh, or the lightness down. I'm going to do that one more time. So go hue saturation and turn the lightness down all the way. And that just kind of blackens that out and then hit apply. And then this becomes kind of like a shadow in the background. And I'm just going to expand it and make it really big. So it's kind of exaggerated uh, shadow in the back behind him. Um, and so really the last thing that I would do with that is turn down its transparency. So again, transparency down to something like 25 to 35 percent is pretty good. So um, I think that the last thing we're probably going to do is add what's called a vignette. So uh, it's just kind of like a little shading on the corners of the background. And so we're going to go to our background layer here that we have, and we'll go to filter and then down to vignette, French term. And let's turn this vignette up. And so that just adds a little like drama to the picture because it has some darker shading in the corners. Um, and so it kind of highlights the focus as being the subject on the center of the page. And so that is that for this computer art tutorial. So hope you guys have fun and get creative with your own uh, computer art promo ad sports card type project. Make sure you save, file save as always, 
uh, upload to Google Classroom. Take care.